approval of previous minutes. We're all good for that. All right. We'll make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good job. Um, first thing is my chief's report. Um, it's kind of a light report this month, which is very exciting. Um, we did 118 calls primary last month. Um, and of those 118 calls, 16 we went to Greenfield for, 13 and a half percent of our call volume. Um, we did some standbys at Frontier Football. We had two trucks at the Sunderland Public Safety Festival, which was a big hit. We had lots of traffic in and out. Lots of people asked lots of questions. Um, look forward to going back next year. Um, I guess we're skipping the heavy stuff. I'll leave the write off for right now. Um, Lori's put in for a grant from the Mass Office of Grants and Research for $2,500 for a new AED. Um, right now, we don't have a dedicated AED to the SUV, so if we get this grant, it would allow us to get a dedicated AED for the SUV. So, Tim, with, on the grants, can you can you have in your report someplace, maybe at the end or something, and just keep a running tally what your what what we do for grants a year? Yep. So that it, it's in the minutes and people see it as well. Yep. Okay. I I think that sometimes that we don't we don't. We don't do enough of that. Okay. I think we want to make sure we call that out this year when we send budgets to capital committees and finance committees. Do passing this down to Chris Thank you. I, I think, well, I, I, yep. I, again, I think it's a big thing. I agree. Right. And, and, and I, I think that as you have a more, I believe you have a more professional, you know, organization staff, that they go out and get those grants where, and, you know, so let, let's, let's uh, highlight those two. Okay. Um, now that Crystal's here, I'll back up slightly. Um, we got the final report from Comstar. It took its sweet time to get to us, but the report is finally finished. Um, in total, there is over eight, we just started over eight hundred thousand dollars on that report from bills that we could either send to collections or were too old to be collected on. Um, Seven hundred thousand dollars, approximately, is going to or has already been sent to collections. That money is sent out. It's no longer viewed as bad debt, and it's off the town of Deerfield's hands. The additional $142,390 is all money that's past the five-year statute of limitations where we can collect on that money, and that is the money that I'm asking be written off. Um, I don't know if the board needs to vote on this or just agree to send it to the select board. I'm not sure the formalities behind this. I think it would be better if the board uh, made a recommendation. Down. The board voted to vote to write off that debt. So, so what we do is we wait for we request a recommendation from the. Um, chief, so give us a recommendation on that. Okay, I reckon I recommend we re we vote to write off this debt because it it's doing nothing on the books. It's just adding bad debt to the town of Deerfield. So my okay. recommendation would be we vote to write off the one hundred forty two thousand three hundred ninety dollars and sixty nine cents. Okay, any questions for Tim? I'll make a motion to write off the $142,390.69 identified as bad debt that is beyond time frame to be collected. Second. Okay, we have a motion made and seconded. Um, ju just, now this is not an unusual process. In, in well, most ambulance will go through a similar thing. We always did in the town of Sunderland, Deerfield, the way we did it many, many years. Um, there's just some, I mean, we can charge it. We know how much it costs to run an ambulance on a call, um, but different insurance companies, Medicare, et cetera, Medicaid, some some people private pay that don't pay, whatever. So there's some debt that, that we can't get, get back. And, and we understand that. So, any other discussion? Here, no other discussion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, we're going to. 6 0 0 Unanimous. Great. Um, and just for your information, the 700000 that was sent to collections, we can expect about a 7 to 10% collection rate on it, is what I've been told by FFR. Um, that's the standard collection rate for pretty much anything that goes to collections. So, if we get more than that, great. If we get the lower end, then it's just, it is what it is. Um, um, and currently I'm addressing this on a month by month basis. So the, that amount of money will never get as high as it's been as it was this time. Um, on average, we're sending somewhere between 10 and $20,000 a month now to collections and somewhere between four and 9,000 is getting written off 
on a case by case basis. Um, just the end, all that's getting off is what, or that's getting written off is what we discussed before is people on Mass Health and Medicare and stuff like that who are already in a limited financial situation. And, and again, the South County EMS is not trying to, 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 you know, be the Scrooges and beating down for door. We're just trying to collect from, look, there's some insurance companies that are private pay that we're just trying to get the money. If someone has a concern, it's pretty much a confidential uh, thing. All they just they have to talk. Do is call the director. You talk, you talk to the director. We, we board of oversight, the town don't even know the people yep. who's doing it, and it's all done. It's all done. Um, all they have to way. do is, if they have questions, they call, can call me. They can call Comstar, and if they call me, I'll refer them to Comstar because they have to fill out a specific form. Um, but if they call me, I'll refer them to Comstar. They'll fill out that hardship request, and the hardship will be approved. And right. it's not. It's it's not a challenging process by any means. So it's not like that. We're trying to do anything different. This has been really been the policies from day one, even Absolutely. when even when the, we did it before for South County EMS. It's just the fact that we're doing this monthly now, so it doesn't reflect on us as a town of Deerfield. Correct. So. Yeah. I'm, I'm thrilled to death. Thank you. And Tim, if you would just um, elaborate on the, once we send something to the collections, then it's shifted into a different category. Yes, it's there's, not considered. My, I, so I'm not an accountant. Brenda seemed to understand more what she, what she was saying than I did, but now that it's shifted into collections, it's not on our books as like bad debt anymore. It's, right. I, don't, I don't know what the term is, unfortunately. The, mm -hmm. the lady said it, and it's just not sticking in my mind. Um, but it's no longer considered bad debt, and it's not uncollected debt. It's just gone somewhere else. And then if they collect it, they send us money. Yeah, I think right. to to simplify it, it's kind of like if you had an old vehicle that's not running anymore, and you park it on the lawn and take the plates off it and leave yeah. it sitting on the lawn. Right. You have, depending on how you view that vehicle, either an eyesore or a potential antique sitting on the lawn. In the eyes of the state, it's an eyesore for us, the town of Deerfield and collections. So by getting rid of that on a monthly basis, it doesn't sit on the lawn, it doesn't right. decay over right. the years. And I believe as long as the debt, there's activity on collecting the debt, it's favorable for us. At some point, Comstar's well, gonna come back to us and say, we've done everything we can, right. and here's more debt that we would right. ask and you to write off. That's those monthly reports that they sent me that say, right. we've our internal collection has failed. Here's the people we're either recommending you write off or send to FFR for collections. So the $8,147.12 that, that are being written off this I already, month. I already wrote that off this month, yeah. Okay, so we don't need to approve that, that'll just. My conversation with Brenda was that if it's under, like. She didn't give me a specific number, but 10, if, it's, okay. if it's under $10,000, then I don't need permission to write it off. Just okay. write it off so it stays off the books and we get it off the books okay. quicker than possible. And that is just so folks on TV who may be watching this are not confused. You don't make the sole decision on that. You work with Brenda, you work with Comstar. Right. After everybody's gone through their process, they come to you and say, we've done everything we can. We can't collect this money at that point that we're writing it off. Right, and most of this money is money that we agreed on as the board, that those people with Medicare, Mass Health on fixed incomes and stuff like that who are not, don't have the disposable income to pay that bill. Okay, thank you. And you, Carolyn is our financial right. agent, is yeah. up to speed on this and an agreement. Um, we're th so, so we're thrilled because this is not then counting against us, okay. so it's fine. Excellent, thank you. Um, I mentioned the AED and then on the AED piece. Yep. I just want to call out and thank Lori for your work. Yes. On getting those applications done. Greatly appreciate the mm -hmm. effort. We should find out you said that one relatively soon, right? They said an award should be announced in December. Okay. Yeah. So hopefully we'll find out it's a pretty quick one. This month and if we got that or not. Um it's great. This is just purely administrative. We've got our new affiliation agreement for Bay State, which is what we sign every year to work as paramedics. Um, it has a few new administrative requirements, but it shouldn't cause any additional taxation on the service or anything like that. So it's, I'm dealing with that right now. Um, the EpiPens already look like they're saving us quite a bit of money. And now granted, there's, this isn't perfect as different medications cost a different amount. We haven't replaced them yet, but we're significantly under that budget item for this year. So it looks like we're gonna save a bit of money in that category. Um, we purchased new pelvic binders this month. Um, they're special splints when someone has a broken hip or pelvis. We've been using the old school technique before of kind of using a blanket or using straps, and this is a more modern approach to it. Um, Zach's got approval from OEMS to put on a continuing education class for it. 
and every year we have a required stretcher training, so we're doing both those at the same time for an hour of con eds. Um, we had talked about, and I apologize, I don't remember if I had this conversation with somebody or we talked about the meeting, um, what we needed to do to replace our oldest stretcher. Um, and I had talked with Brenda about how because, we, because of the grant that we got to get the, the third life pack, there was now extra money in our retained earnings. If we could spend that or if it had to be a capital expense, a capital request, and Brenda said it would have to be a capital request, but we could instantaneously use it after town meeting. So whenever the town meeting is, we could then put that order, put that order in for a new stretcher. Um, so How much would it be? It's in here. Um, Thirty-four, thirty-five, somewhere in there. Yeah, yeah. thirty-four, thirty-five. Attached in your package. Yeah. yeah. So that would have to be um, thirty-five, thirty-six. That would have to be a capital request. Yep. Um, you I'm. Got the forms this week, didn't you? Yes, I did. And I was waiting to have the boot meeting to talk. Just can, obviously, I'm not going to do something without the consent of the board. But to just talk to you, all of you about um, our the need to put in that capital request is that our oldest stretcher is fourteen years old. Fourteen years old. Um, the manufacturer doesn't really recommend that we use it anymore. Um, it's it's still safe to use on a day-to-day -day basis, but it's past the recommended replacement point, and I think we should I think we should replace it. Um, so that would be my recommendation for a capital expense for next year, in addition to for fiscal year 25, because this would be coming out of fiscal year 24's retained earnings. For fiscal year 25, we put in a request for a new auto loader for the new ambulance as our new auto loader will be aging out of the recommended cycle of replacement. Um, and that would be another, what was that? Was that the one it comes to, yeah, it comes to about seven yeah. to four trade-ins. And the trade-ins are written on there as well. Um, so if the board's okay with it, I would like to put in both of those capital requests, but I'm open to discussion. Does it become a liability for us if we go beyond the manufacturer's recommended useful life of the product, and if so, we're probably best to do it. Yeah, it does become a liability, and there's also the problem with the state requires us to get service on these products every year. Mm -hmm. um, Stryker won't service them now after a certain point, and our options are to get service from another. Um, company who there are none local, so anytime we have an issue, they will have to fly somebody out to service it. Um, and so we'd have to pay for two different service plans. We'd have to pay for a service plan from Stryker because we already pay for one from Stryker, and then we'd have to pay for a separate service plan for our older equipment, which would be an additional few thousand a year, depending on how many stretchers and stuff they were servicing in that other service plan. Um, what's the what's a useful life of the stretcher and the loader? The loader's 10, the stretcher's 7, is what they're currently recommending. South County has never bought a stretcher to paint the picture. <laughs> yeah. No, I know. We we got them years ago. Well, they're also now, strikers putting their foot down about what they think the serviceable life is and when they're unwilling to service them. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what the, I don't know what the grants, I don't know what change to make them now put their foot down about when they're willing to service things anymore, but now they're doing it. There was probably a lawsuit Loss that wanted yeah. Yeah. Lawsuit. The challenge is we don't do the we don't do the volume of calls that a larger service does. Right. So they put a year time on it as opposed to number of cycles. So we've probably got a lower number of cycles, but we've hit the age limit. And right. the fear becomes, God forbid it fails with a patient on there, or it fails period and somebody gets hurt, whether it's our folks or a patient. And it's gonna cost us a lot more money than that. And there's so. there's also the benefit with this one that after the monitor purchase from the AFG grant, we have 5000 you said? Four, approximately. About four. So we have an, another approximately $4,000 to offset that cost mm -hmm. um, from the grant. So it'll be around 34, 33 then at that point. Um, okay. The other big look that Tim's been diving into like crazy is kind of staggering things so that they're not all coming up at once. Like right, right. now we're sitting on a lot of things needing to get purchased all at once, which is obviously a huge weigh on the department and the towns as a whole. Um, and so being able to buy something now, looking out two or three years to replace another one and then two or three years from there so that things are a little bit more staggered. Yeah. Um, definitely, at least from our opinion here. It it's, like almost, it's almost as if in the budgeting process we need to set up a line item for 
replacement items. And correct me if I'm, <laughs> I'm learning more and more about town budgets, but correct me if I'm misunderstanding this. Um, my thought would be that whereas we have set aside retained earnings for trucks every year, like what we put at the truck, we just increase that, what we set aside retained earnings to re um, replace equipment. I know there's, I know after talking with Brenda, there's limited ways we can budget for saving new equipment because of how town budgets work, but I figured that sounded like a safe bet. But yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, years ago, we used to vote every year on or the cruisers. It was like two out of every three years, and it just became every year. Same with computers in the school. That used to be a thing you used to vote on, and now it's just our budget line. Part of the budget. Budget. Mm -hmm. And this just has to become, I think, part of the budget. If we can put it in as part of the budget, and you can plan on it every year, mm -hmm. and make sure that we keep up with the rising cost of these products so that the money's there as we need to. It becomes easier because it's just a. Well, if we're on top of our collections, it doesn't right. necessarily mean that our assessments are going to go up. Right. And, right. and, and, a, and a, our runs are, running, are increasing, are so our revenue is increasing as well. So right. if we keep the same mix of our insurance to Medicare, Mass Health, those kinds of things, and our write offs to a minimum because you know, you, someone's used up all their Medicare or whatever. Right. It, I, I think we'll be all right. Yeah. I don't, I don't foresee that as a problem. I think it's, it's much, it makes more sense to have it as part of the <coughs> schedule. Right. And then have yeah. it be planned. Than yeah. To have yeah. To say, I think oh we can gosh. get a schedule for capital items as far out as, you know, five, seven years, ten, yeah. ten whatever, yep. that would be the best way to yep. do it. Absolutely. I agree. It, just, it doesn't make any sense to spend our money flying someone into service somewhere no. else. Yeah, I, I agree, and I, I think it's the best the best course of action, as unfortunate as to spend that much money, is to replace the stretcher. Because um, when you fly somebody in, he's going to come look at it. It needs these parts. I need mm -hmm. to order them. So either i got to stay here for three days until they get here, or i got to fly home and then fly back. No. It's ridiculous. And they maybe not even be able to get the parts. Right. Because part of them, it, they don't want to repair them. Yeah. Um, so. But I know that the capital requests are due December 1st, so we wouldn't meet before then, but I just wanted to run it by all of you, and then I would put the capital request together and submit it if everyone is in favor. I don't know if there needs to be a vote or anything, but if everyone's in favor of that, then. I would just do it. Because um, that's part of our budget. Yeah. Um, we don't have our budget yet, but we would just incorporate that into the budget. Yeah. It's a safety item. Yeah. And, and there's also some trade-in on that. So like the top dollar of the power load and stretcher cumulatively are like 70, but there's five or 6,000 trade-in for one compact. About 65, 6,800 dollars, it's, yeah, it's on that quote there. So that, you guys that helps have. offset it also a little bit. Okay. So what do you do with the old ones, Ask. Yeah. I mean, it, it gets traded in, trade and in? I don't know if they strip it down and sell it to someone else, or I don't know what happens to it. <laughs> So it's, there is a trade-in? Yeah, yeah, it's like, like Zach said, so the total for this, the stretcher trade-in is like 2,500, and the power trade-in is like four grand. So it's not much, but it's something. So these are stretchers that they say are no good, but they buy them back and refurbish them and resell them. Probably. They might go Well, I was just wondering, yeah. do, we, do we want to, do you want to trade it in, or do you just hold on to it and that, your, that becomes a spare? And when you have the guy out here fixing it, then they would fix the. Well, the, I guess the concern would be that they won't. Striker won't, won't fix that one anymore. It. And then, then why? Why would we then then hire the other company to service them? Then you got to fly somebody in to service mm -hmm. your spare. That that's what I'm saying. You just you it would be your spare, and you would put it there until you need two two or three of them. I mean, anyways, we got to look. We got to. Twenty five hundred doesn't seem like a lot, and I agree with you. It's the number. You know the cycles. Yeah. You know, yeah. You, just like you could, if you you could have, we know from our interviews that you know some of the, the some of the people that were, we talked to were here running twenty thirty thousand runs a year, not well in excess of what we were doing. Yes, the unfortunate joke in the system of like Matt's out of them putting a set date on it when we could do five thousand lifts in that lifetime and somebody's done twenty thousand a year. It's just yeah. the games that manufacturers play, unfortunately. Right. Oh, yeah. Yep. Um, so I'll put that, all that stuff together, and I'll get it submitted, um, and I'll get that taken care of. Um, okay. We also we replaced our IO drills. They were aging; they needed to be replaced. That was a pretty minuscule purchase. Um, 
We had to replace some smoke and CO monitors in the building. That was just about $1,000. Um, so did that come out of the town of Deerfield, our landlord, or? I, do you remember where it came out of? I have not gotten that bill yet. Uh, oh, we haven't got the bill yet. My understanding is when I was talking to Scarborough, everything that was in the building when the building was made comes out of the town of Deerfield pays for it. And anything that we add, South County pays for. So that should be because it was a pre-existing system that broke covered by the town of Deerfield, if my understanding is correct. What was it again? The smoke detectors in CO. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, That's ours. Yeah, so that we had to deal with. Um, our oldest truck has a breaker box that needs to be replaced. It's gonna be a few hundred dollars. It, it's in the process. It's not affecting its usability, it just affects us, the ability of stuff to charge when we're using the truck. Um, unit 102 had a lot of, it had brakes done, it had marker lights, it had amber lights, it had rotors, um, it needed a new parking brake. It was about $2,296. Um, and then today, one of the tires came off the bead, and we had to have them come up and deal with that. So we're, I haven't, they haven't sent us a bill yet, but it's probably gonna be around a, a thousand, give or take, you think? I mean, it's, it's roadside or, or here service, right? So it, it's gonna be what it's gonna be. They have not given me that price yet, so. It's cheaper than a tow, thankfully. Yes. Do um, you have a question, Tim? Um, yeah, I wanted to go back to this uh, oh, I'm sorry. striker thing. It's got a quote date and it's got an expiration date on the quote. And so can you just explain? So, and Zach, you can correct me if I'm wrong here in a second. The quote was made, strikers anticipating their costs going up next year. The quote was made with a guess as to what their cost going to be. None of the sales reps know what the cost is going to be. Um, so he made us a quote based on, I think, as far as he could, correct? So February 1, they have an expected raise in costs. They don't yeah. know what that cost is going to be. Um, I explained to him that it was for budgetary planning purposes. He was very well aware of that. And what he said he was doing was basing it off of what his expectation was for that February 1 increase, mm -hmm. expecting that after that February 1 increase, this would be the price so that we could plan around that number. Um, there's no definites. I can't guarantee that. He can't yeah. guarantee that. Nobody yeah. can. Um, but he did, uh, he did say that he was making sure to add the money there so that um, it was uh, able to sustain that February 1 increase. I know we did get quoted for stretcher and power loader when we were buying the truck, um, which we've discussed in the, the meetings, and it was about sixty-four, sixty-five thousand dollars $65,000, somewhere in there. Um, mm -hmm. So it's about a five or $6,000 increase. Um, right. But as I said, that's just a... It's a guesstimate. He was pretty confident that that would be okay for the increase in February one, but that's that's all I can go off of. And are these for immediate purchase? So the stretcher, in an ideal world, we would purchase. Guess I'm doing the fiscal 20 year 24 capital request, and there's a little bit of lead time. We would purchase right after town meeting. Brenda right. said we could purchase that yeah. the next, next day, um, and then the power loader, we would do it as fiscal year 25, and we would order that one depending on their lead time later on, because the warranty and repair process, like the serviceability for that starts upon delivery. So we want that to get delivered later on than immediately on, if that makes sense. Uh -huh. um, because it doesn't matter when it's installed, it's when the box is delivered, is when they say that that's when the service life starts. Right. Um, so we would ideally plan that one coming as close to the end of life as for the other one as possible. Who's gonna install it? Ideally, it's going to be installed by the new truck manufacturer in the new truck. Okay, um, so this is for the new truck? Yes, if something, okay. if no, things don't end up working out, it has to go in an old truck and then move over. It'll be unfortunate because it'll end up costing a little more to transition it over, um, but we'll see how things play out. That's fine, I thought, it, I thought, and I apologize, I thought we needed one for an existing truck here and it was going to... Theoretically, we should be timing things out if the new truck arrives in the predicted window where that doesn't need to happen, but again, that's theoretically. Okay. Um, um, and Unit 102 had another battery blow, which was disconcerting. Um, Lori and Zach, one of you, one or both of them managed to notice it just before it became too much of a problem. So that's another battery we had to add to the list of things that we needed to replace. Um, we're going to add portable radio chargers to our trucks. We haven't had them for years. It's been off and on problems for years. It's going to cost us about five or fifty bucks. Um, but it's kind of a problem when crews have dead radios when they're stuck on a standby or something. Yeah, that's not yes. a good thing. Um, I have nothing to report for personnel. Um, the truck search we met with, I haven't physically signed anything yet. The price is all set, it's not going up. It's, they haven't given us something to sign, but we met with her. We went through the whole thing. She's finalizing everything. 
but there will be no surprises. It'll be what we expected it to be. I'm expecting binder delivery on Wednesday of this coming week, um, which has that contract in it with the plans and everything else, but she did guarantee multiple times that it was set at that number and it was ordered. Um, it had been asked that I come up with a, or we had talked about the proposed rate changes. It had been asked that I come up with a suggested new rates. I came up with the average rates recommended by the county. Um, if you, on the, one of the last pages, you can see what Medicare pays, and there's nothing I can do about that. That's what Medicare pays us. Um, our current rates, and then the new rates that I recommend based on the averages for Franklin County. Um, our rates would go up a little bit, and we would charge a little bit more for mileage. Bring in a little bit more money. It's going to be, it depends on the insurance companies and stuff, how much we actually collect and how much of a difference it actually makes. Um, but those would be my recommended new rates, and yeah, that's what I have for that. Um, Good. That's fine. When yeah. do we want to start the new rates? January 1st. January 1st. Yeah. Okay. I can, I'll, I can, I'll talk to Comstar and see if I need to wait till January 1st, or I can submit something right now with these new rates for could January 1st. We, could we start Jan December 1st, pick up the extra month? Theoretically, as, as long as they could do it, that I don't know what the, if it's instantaneous yeah. or I'll if tell you what, I'll make, I'll make a motion that we approve the new rates and implement them as quickly as Comstar can. Why lose the extra month of income? Okay. Perfect. Second. It really doesn't matter because mm -hmm. our fiscal year is July to July. Yeah. And if we bring so. in extra money, it just, it helps. Right. And we're not going to collect on this until the end of the year anyhow mm -hmm. with the way the insurance companies pay. So the end of our fiscal, we probably wouldn't see this money start to come in until April, May. It so. there, it's, I don't, I wish I could understand it. I'm trying to understand it. It doesn't make any sense. I see p bills from last month and I see bills from eight months ago and it, it's all It's all over the place. Yeah. Right. Um, so you made a motion? Made a motion to accept the recommended increase in rates and ask Comstar to implement these as quickly as possible. And I seconded it. Second? Yeah. Discussion? Fred? Like just clarification that we will institute these rates as soon as Comstar uh, it, yeah, it, sends, it, sends their it, approval. Yeah. If they say they can do it tomorrow, put them in tomorrow. Right. If not, as right. quickly as they can implement them. I'll try to talk. I'll reach out tomorrow. Hopefully, I mean, it's Wednesday before yeah, Thanksgiving, so we'll see. Yeah. That's why I said as quickly as possible. I, you know. Yep. Okay, Crystal, all set. Yeah, I mean, there, you don't have to post anywhere that there's a rate change or I don't anything think so. like that. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. I'll ask them if they know if anything's happened, but I don't think I've never heard anything in the past. Uh, granted, I wasn't we've, as involved. But. We've never posted in the past. We've just yeah. done it. Okay. I'll second you. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor of <coughs> the uh, proposed rate changes, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? 6 0. Great. Um, and that's my chief's report. Um, Do me a favor, make a note. We should probably vi visit these on an annual basis yeah. going forward. And mm -hmm. Do we want to set them for July 1 so it coincides with our fiscal year? I thought, oh, well, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm trying to remember the previous conversation we had. Um, we talked about January 1st because that's often when insurance changes, I think, the ch insurance collection I, I don't care, but let's just. Well, that, your open enrollment is usually in December, mm -hmm. November to December. So it makes sense to start the new rates as of January 1st. Okay. So. Because that's probably when the Medicare rate and everything else would yeah, change. That, that, yeah, they okay. do set that at that point. Okay. So it makes sense to just get on some kind of schedule. It doesn't sure. matter as long as it's a As long as we're looking at it on a regular basis and annual schedule. taking care of it. Right. Uh, so just one yep. question on this. Um, so the, the two, 2023 Medicare fee schedule, um, that's going to change next year? Yes, I don't know. I've tried. I tried looking the other day, and I sent Comstar an email. I haven't heard back um, just to see if they knew what the rates were going to be yet. Um, but yeah. I couldn't find any information for what it is yet. So yeah. I don't know if this is something that they slide under the door at the last minute or not. Um, well, you have to keep yeah. the government running to well, make right. those decisions, just yeah. like the farm bill and everything else. It's not done. Uh, Pete, not to glance over it, but you had mentioned in your chief's report there was nothing to report on personnel. Correct. And I think the fact that there's nothing to report on personnel is quite a milestone. And I would like to thank you and the rest of the team 
Um, I know with not having a permanent director in place, there's been a lot of work put in by a lot of folks to keep things moving. And in a time where there could have been chaos and issues and challenges, it seems like things have been running pretty darn smoothly. I agree. So thank you all. Brenda, thank you. Brenda is so happy. She, every time I talk to her, she's just smiling, mm -hmm. happy. Yes. Things are getting addressed. Excellent. Haven't so, been addressed, so. Yeah. I just wanted to recognize and appreciate everybody for all the efforts that have gone in to keep the ship moving, keep things on track with the new ambulance, grants that have been coming in, equipment being ordered. It's all been moving forward. Just repairs into the building. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just, it's yeah. great. I know it, it, it takes a village. And I give you credit for leading the tribe at this point, but. I have a lot of help, which I agree. You've got a lot of help, but I appreciate not only the two that are here, but the rest of the team that's been involved in helping to support to keep everything going the way it needed to go. Um, I think there was concern and some trepidation when we first learned about Zoe moving on, but we've been, I, I can tell you, I've been very happy with what I've seen and the way things have continued to run. So thank you all for the I appreciate it all. No I will it. pass on your appreciation. Um, Carolyn said something which made me remember. I just found this out today. Um, we were, the garage floor needs to be touched up and resealed. Scar Scarborough said the town of Deerfield will pay for this. It's going to be about eight grand. Probably won't happen until the spring. Um, but yeah, you have to have the doors. Open. Yeah, and it takes about seventy-two hours to cure. Um, so we're working on that. We're also working on getting the floors in here resealed or waxed, whatever they do to these floors. Um, and Kevin also said the town of Deerfield deals with that. So hopefully that'll be happening relatively soon. All right. So when you do the bays, are they going to do? One bay at a time. Do they do all three at I'm once? I'm not sure. He hasn't. <coughs> he hasn't come in yet, so I don't know what the plan is. Um, weather permitting, theoretically, the annuals is locked up outside or just as safe as they are inside. Okay. Um, but it would be very weather dependent as medications are temperature regulated. Right. Um, That's why it would be in warmer weather, and yeah. it would be all the bays would be open, and yeah. I would imagine they'd go through and do it all at once. Yeah. It's probably most efficient to do it all at once. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just sometimes lining up i'm sure it's an outside contractor that does this mm -hmm. lighting them up and getting them to come at a point where it's not going to get over i don't know what the temperature I, regulations i Aliyah talked to the, i didn't talk to the guy so i'm not entirely sure but he's coming in i think the next few weeks to take a look see um yeah. but those things are happening just so you're aware um the next items on the agenda was the srt um i unfort i know that there was some conversation that happened i unfortunately wasn't able to obviously do because there was some absences in the town hall to get as much information as I wanted, but I'm interested to hear what you guys have heard. Well, there's, um, it's still continuing discussion, but there's three kinds of insurance. There's vehicle insurance, there's liability insurance, and then there's um, workers' comp kind of insurance if someone was injured. So there's no question that there's coverage for vehicle insurance because the vehicle is listed on our list of the vehicles. So it doesn't matter if you guys hit something or run someone over or get hit, there's going to be coverage no matter what it is. As long as it's not a personal, um, you know, errand, it's, it's actually a response. And, you know, on town business, then that's covered. Um, general liability, um, surprisingly, there is coverage for um, participation now that Zoe's moved on. Before, when Zoe was there, um, as part of the coverage from Sunderland, um, that would have meant there was no coverage. So, um, because that was, you know, uh, you know, use of force is the biggest liability and that wasn't normal to our operation. Mm -hmm. So it was correct to stop, but now that Zoe's moved on, um, there is probably coverage. And the reason why I say probably coverage, because right now um, the the renewals are starting to get be sent out, and there um, has been some issues with the participation of these kind of things. Um, so they are not sure if there's going to be a surcharge for that on our general liability, if we want that kind of coverage, or that it would just still be covered. But as Did long you know as what the surcharge was, or no, no, because they 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 are just starting the renewals, <laughs> renewals in July to July. Mm -hmm. And they're starting to send them out, and they don't, you know. So I guess a couple other communities have called about this 
general stuff. Um, but we are anomaly, and that um, is why there is some issue here. Because what happens is, ironically, Zoe would have been covered because of the IOD, injury on duty, would be covered under Sunderland mm -hmm. because he was participating or she was participating under Sunderland's, um, whether there was a MOU or you know official okay, it doesn't matter, he, she was participating. So she would have been covered, but because we're a municipal service, we have our workers covered under workers' comp. So you guys, if you participated, would not have been covered. So that was a, that is continuing to be the hugest discussion. And the reason why is because the injury of on duty, IOD, is um, requires minimal amount of training. It's for fire departments and police department and police officers. Our municipal EMS is not fire or police. So there's not minimal, they're not meeting the minimal uh, training requirement. So therefore there's no coverage for individuals at this point under workers' comp. <coughs> However, they are trying to see if there would be some kind, once a month isn't enough. So if we apply for a waiver, then they w need to know how much extra we want to spend, how much, you know, how many people, that kind of thing. And you had sent additional information today. Yeah, I just, I just, as soon as you emailed me, I sent yeah. out the information you were looking yeah. for. So potentially there could be an opportunity for us to, to participate, but right now there's no coverage for our regular employees because it's not coming during their workers' comp. So, so I, I thank you, Carolyn, but. I think the Board of Oversight has to discuss if we think it's an appropriate use of funds. Well, one of the other options <coughs> was um, the state stop team, Sunderland, Waitley, and Deerfield apparently have the stop team, the state stop team, come and participate at Frontier and then one of the elementary schools. What we could do is increase the training opportunity by having them go to all the elementary schools in the, you know, our three towns, plus Frontier. And then the, then all the um, EMS could participate for, you know, it's, it's, it's okay. usually, I don't know, John says it's like three or four days, so you could strip expand the training so that we can make sure we got everybody covered. But they still wouldn't be, in, in that capacity, they wouldn't be the stop team, they wouldn't operate in the same capacity as an SRT member, because the SRT members, they operate in that field as a member of the team. The stop team is state police. So they wouldn't they wouldn't be going into the situations that we have concerns about, if my understanding is correct, which it might not be. Um, but this, the state police aren't just going to let us join their team. No, but you would participate. At, you would get your active shooter training with the stop team. Oh, I see, your, what, I see what you're saying. And you would train the whole <clears throat> department rather than one or two people. I guess the question would be, the question for that would be how, if we would, because currently there's no payment for training, so if that would be mandatory for the whole department, how we would fund, like how we would make people do that? Um, or if it, people would have to be made well, to do it? Well, to me, I mean, I think the active shooter training is important. So well, I agree. So we just, it, that would be part of the budget. The new budget would be that you would put in a line item for everyone to be trained and have that exposure to the stop team, which would be the responders in our three towns. And another thing that I'd like to just throw out is that I mentioned this before, but we're going to be interviewing chief candidates unless, you know, on December 7th. Right. Mm -hmm. And we're so close to having a person in this position that I really think we would be wise to wait and let this person have input. Um, you know, I mean, I, we can discuss it all we want, but it seems weird to be making this kind of large decision when we're about to hire somebody to be the person who makes the big recommendations. That's just uh, my view on it. Yeah, I, I, well, I'm just saying we, we don't know if it actually is going to cost us additional money right. from an insurance mm -hmm. point of view or not. but. We need to make verify that we have, if someone gets hurt, that there is going to be coverage because otherwise that's right. an unfunded liability to our town. Right, so we don't have the information yeah. on that, so there's no point in trying to make this decision right. tonight. So if we have, 
I'm just trying to understand yeah. this whole thing. I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. You don't have to apologize. I'm, I'm just trying I'm to probably just trying to explain it. Yeah. No, and I appreciate it. And I appreciate all the work that's gone into that. I know our team members that are here are passionate about the SRT. Um, they put a lot of work into it, and they'd like to continue that. I'm just trying to understand. Well, norm, uh, the most mm -hmm. critical thing here to understand is that they, the insurance company views this as IOD. If, if, but that's because all the participants across the state that they insure are either a fire department or a police department. It's the usual problem that South County keeps, not keeps running into. What we run into is that there's no legislator for, leg, legislature for EMS to be recognized as public safety. We're just, right now we exist in this weird bubble that there's. Right, it's just workers' comp. Yeah. If, like, if. A municipal workers' comp. Right, yeah. because if, I'm sorry. If, if a firefighter or a police officer gets injured in the line of duty and can't return to work, they're guaranteed a percentage yeah, of his if, salary. If Bob over there gets hurt and they can't return to work, he's guaranteed his 75% of his salary, 72% of his salary um, without tax for the rest of his life. And if I get injured at work, I get workman's comp. Right. Until one workman's comp decides to dry up or whatever, however it works out. Because EMS just doesn't exist in... And so that's why... Ironically, like I said, Zoe actually had coverage because she was covered under the right. Sunderland's police training and mm -hmm. fire department, and that's why Amherst can participate in the in the one in in Hampshire, Hampshire County because they're firefighters right. and they have the minimum training. But once a month is not enough training to qualify for the IOD. So if we do the training with the stop team. Would the team members that are here that were part of the SRT be able to return to that SRT again and participate with that group? Uh, the, the insurance mm -hmm. company is not, they're, they're trying to just uh, assert how much training, minimum training, that the firefighters or police department is, a, you know, we have to mm -hmm. assume that level of training if our persons are going to be covered under this IOD. And they're, Right now, they're only covered under workers' comp, and that does not qualify for that. So, I was so more concerned from the liability point of view, you know, because it's, it's not normal for our municipal EMS to be, you know, have a gun, a gun kind of situation. Yeah. Okay, so I was worried about Zoe wearing an EMS uniform, and then if they were short, Chris Green said he would have them have Zoe be in them. So I was like, oh right. my God, use of force. But that was all under your Sunderland's um, liability, not Deerfield's. Deerfield would have, pro I mean, we would have been pulled in, but it was okay in their mind because we would have been limited to the 100,000 municipal um, limit because we were just doing EMS. Whereas you all had that exposure for the neg if there was a negligence or you know uh, some kind of lawsuit settlement, you all would pay for it in Sunderland, not not Deerfield. Yeah, my understanding was this: if Zoe was involved, as soon as she touched a weapon, she became a police officer, would be covered under. Sunderland it doesn't as matter. A she was officer. covered under Sunderland's right, even participating. Okay. The insurance company mm -hmm. said no covered under IOD because she was participating even though she was it was secondary from EMS it was primary from Sunderland so Sunderland had the exposure not Deerfield all right I didn't understand that when I was first discussion I was just like oh my god this is a huge exposure for us as Deerfield but it wasn't really because the rest of the team had not any guns. But to me, there, but to me, there's a more basic conversation. It's why is South County EMS providing EMS service for all of Franklin County and not being compensated? Well, it's the same. It's because it's the same as any mutual aid agreement. The difference is we're just doing it in a targeted capacity instead of a random capacity how we normally do mutual aid. But it, it's not mutual aid though. Well, that's it's, how it's it's big difference. Mutual aid is that 
Greenfield ambulance. Oh, that's right. Greenfield doesn't have an ambulance, but Greenfield ambulance is supposed to respond. They're busy on another call. This isn't the same thing. Right. So right. if all the departments in Franklin County were reporting to this training, and then the, the emergency was in Greenfield, and Greenfield would handle it, but they're not available, so we go up and cover it. But it's not. It's just one ambulance. One ambulance service is in covering for the entire county. As I understand, well, so that's different. South County is the only paramedic service involved in the team. Greenfield Fire's BLS Ambulance is part of the team as well. Um, you're, so you're making my point, you know. I'm not, I'm not trying to make any you're, point. I'm no, just, you're, I'm making, just, you're making I'm, my I'm, point. I'm not trying to make we're any just, point. We're just trying to hash out all the facts. Well, that, yes. but that, but see, that's, I, I, this but is I a fact. I, 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 don't think Sun, I don't think Sunderland should be paying for Greenfield again as we see a, a large <laughs> percent. We had more, call, more calls at Greenfield. Greenfield had more calls than Whiteley. If I was Whiteley, I'd be pretty upset. Well, yeah. we've and, essentially... And, and we've Fred is, he's just this. not showing it. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, I, 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 I'm in a so, constant so, of upset at Greenfield. <laughs> so, yeah, no, 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 but we've, we've discussed this. We have essentially picked up a fourth town with no, no buy-in to our overhead. Correct. Because okay. consistently, month after month, as you documented, we we have the same amount of calls from Greenfield as we do from Sunderland and Whateley. Yeah, but but see, so and that's the other conversation back on on this SRT SRT, and again, so Greenfield is not supplying because they don't have paramedic level service, right? Perfect. Montague is not doing it because they don't. So who who <coughs> would provide the service? Well, that's the. That's the thing. Okay, yeah. so since there's only one town or one group or two groups, I, I believe Coleraine could probably do it, and maybe Northfield, Burnison. That there are paramedic services there okay. as well. So why why wouldn't they why wouldn't they be compensated though though and why wouldn't those services be compensated? And I don't know if this is my theory, and this is not. I'm just spitballing here. Yeah. Is that the theory is that. The towns of Sunderland and Waitley and stuff benefit when the SRT is deployed to those towns. Like ignoring Greenfield as a whole, the situate the problems that come from there is that Sunderland would benefit from Greenfield's special response team coming in the capacity of the law enforcement officers and now that there are medical personnel there as well, in the same way that Greenfield benefits when the ambulance part of the SRT comes at the paramedic level. I don't know if there's a right answer. I'm not trying to sway the board one way or another. Yeah. I just... I, I, the only question I have, though, is my understanding is Sunderland and Whateley and Deerfield would call the stop team. Not... not Sunderland and Whateley, my understanding is Sunderland and Whateley both have members that are on the SRT. Have, will call the SRT for certain circumstances. Deerfield doesn't participate in no, the SRT. No, Donnie, Donnie Bates is now um, chief on Conway, so there's no one in, in Whateley's in or and no. then Zoe is the person from Sunderland, and I, I don't know if the chief and, has okayed that. And ben, and Peters. ben Peters is also on the team from Sunderland. All right, so yeah. let me back this up a second then. If there was a situation at the high school or Deerfield Elementary, God forbid, mm -hmm. and we call for the stop team, my understanding is the stop team is not going to be here in like 10 or 15 minutes. It's going to take time for them all to get here. My experience has been, and I've had limited experience, my experience in scenes where this SRT and the stop team have been requested is the SRT was available faster than the stop team, purely on locational basis, because the stop team comes from all over Western Mass and the SRT is local. Right. But that's my limited understanding. Yeah. I know that John will call the stop team. That's all I know. Because I asked him, yeah. if we had an incident, would we call? But that's partially because Deerfield has not ever participated in the SRT for, and I don't know the, the logistical reasons behind that, but Deerfield has never been a member of the SRT. Again, I, I, do, I do just want to ask the question of everyone. You don't have to agree with me, but why wouldn't you, within 10 days of hiring a chief, push this back 10 days or 15 days to our, you know, it just makes no sense to me personally. If I was coming into a department, a big decision like this is going to be made, and Ten days before I get hired, you make this decision, and then he doesn't agree with it. Um, then I, I think that's a problem. I personally, I was or hoping, she, whoever we hire. I understand, and I, I I agree with what you're saying. I was hoping there was going to be a simple fix with the insurance company, yeah. and we could get the team members who will put all the effort into this backup and training with that group. It looks to be more complicated than what I had hoped for. 
I agree with what you've got to say. And uh, it, it may need to be a bigger discussion with whoever the new chief is and the three police chiefs to talk about this yeah, as well. I, I, think I, said, I think, and pushing it off for a new chief, which I agree with, is not going to get it done as soon as the new chief is hired. Right. The new chief's going to have lots of exactly. Right. Well, yeah, I think flight. we have to talk to Greenfield. The new mayor is taking you know over in January, and we really should make some effort. Yeah. To say, look. You know, we had seven mutual aides. I don't know if in Deerfield those mutual aides were when the ambulance was in Greenfield, but you know, statistically, you're out of town. Yeah, the vast, I don't think, I'm, I'm trying to remember the numbers this month, I don't think we missed any calls in our town because we were doing mutual aid this month. Not that that really plays into the fact that we're I still supplementing. If you guys can just make sure you're documenting what is happening. I'm reviewing every month, and the reason Thank these you. numbers got to, were so late this month is because the dispatch center took their time this month. Um, but every month I review the mutual aid calls that come into Deerfield, or Deerfield Center and Wheatley, and I match them up against the times that we've been out on calls to see if we've missed any calls because of mutual aid. And I don't think that there was any this month. Um, okay. There have been some in the past. Uh, it's going to happen, and it's going to happen even when mutual aid is truly <clears throat> mutual. There's going to yeah. be some times where that happens. Yeah. Um, but I don't think we had any this month, or last month, I should say, because these are October's I appreciate numbers. you keeping the statistics as much as you can, because this is the kind of information that we, you know, just data that we need to take to, you know, the new mayor and say, right. we need to look at this. Yeah, no, with the, the new mayor, 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 may or may not be aware of the nature of the problem. Now, the new mayor is going to say, that's nice, but we have no money, which <laughs> the Greenfield is always going to say. Yeah, and then you say, well, get AMR to agree right. to us, provide a third ambulance. Right, but let, let's uh, find some a solution to this, because we should at no cost to you. <laughs> subsidize in your ambulance. Yeah, yeah. When not our problem. <laughs> right. When does the new mayor in Greenfield start? January. Okay. January 1st, yeah. Do we... Do you try to have a conversation before she gets sworn in, or you wait until afterwards? I have her phone number. Yeah, we're we're p working on okay doing this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're doing some outreach. Okay, thank you. We have a lot of mutual interests. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, moving on. Moving on. So the detail rate. I talked to Brenda. I had initially had some confusion about how I needed to break down how we would do with detail rate. Um, Brenda's fine with the information that I've provided with her. Um, I've adjusted what we would charge slightly after running the detail rate based, oops, that's not the right page, based on what we um, would be paying employees. The police department and the fire department's employees both make $60 an hour to do details, so it seemed logical for us to pay EMS the same amount to do details. Um, my thought would be that we would vote to Go forward with the detail rate at current paying town of Deerfield or town of Deerfield South County Mass employees sixty dollars an hour, and we charge the rates that I put here. We would adjust the rates on a yearly basis, um, as with inflation and stuff. The I, my understanding is the detail rate goes up slightly. Um, I would also like to include that the whoever takes the chief's position can also work these details because I think that's important, and especially for large scale events. Um, mm -hmm. But that's my proposal. And community events. Right. Um, and I talked to Brenda, we would make a revolving account similar to what the police department has. Um, she doesn't think we would need any seed money just because we don't, the police department needs seed money because they're, they're millions of dollars or stuff is flowing through there and we're not going to have that much money flowing through there. Mm -hmm. um, so she said it would be easy to just reconcile it as things come in and out and she could balance those accounts. Um, so she, she wasn't concerned at all about it. And on the detail rate, it's just... And I don't know this. I'm asking, is it just the flat rate paid per hour, or is it the flat, or is it the rate plus they get benefits and retirement and? I think my understanding is it's not included in overtime. It's not included in retirement. It's just okay. sixty dollars an hour. It's a separate rate. thing. I'll make a separate. It's a, it's a separate income stream. Okay. To them, it's, it's like it's like from it the contractor. Count, right. So right. It does okay. not count okay. towards the retirement. Yeah. It's, or, or we don't have to do it. That's why I just want to make sure we we're not short ourselves on benefits if we needed to. The do conversations it. I've had, it doesn't appear that that's the case. Okay. Um, and it, it's going to come out of a separate payroll, like a separate account. There'll be a separate timesheet. There'll be all that. Okay. Everything's yeah. going to be separate. Perfect. Um, is this is the page that's scheduled dedicated provider? Yep. All right. Because um, it doesn't say detail anywhere. Uh, but oh, I, uh, I, down at the bottom it does. Take that back. 
Um, so can you just talk about the last minute non-scheduled? I mean, is there a flat rate for a BLS ambulance? That's... So the last minute non-scheduled, and admittedly, I should have updated this part because I updated the other two. Um, the last minute non-scheduled is if Yankee Candle called us and they're like, we need a standby ambulance, there's a major event. We're like and it's we need it in two hours. We're like okay, well there's a larger incur like there's a larger fee associated with that, mm -hmm. um, and here is like like the town is making actual money off of that because of the the problems associated with facilitating that last minute mm -hmm. um, rate and the the budgeting concerns. Um, the lack of proper planning has now dictated an emergency on my right. part. Right, and, you're pay and for it. my understanding yeah. from talking with Brenda is that the police department and the fire department have the same. Like a last minute detail is exponentially more expensive. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't get good information as to how, like, what how they like, picked those numbers for that one. Like these numbers, the the dedicated ambulance for the staff ambulance and the single provider, I based on depreciation, I based on fuel costs, I based on all this other stuff. Um, but the other ones, it didn't seem like there was an actual like logical reason for why it costs more other than the last minute notice mm -hmm. um but i don't I, I wish i had a better answer than that <laughs> well it's an incentive to the plan ahead <laughs> right right well yeah, yeah. That, that, that's, yeah. The, the, uh, that's yeah. the whole point yeah. and how many days ahead do you need the notice i don't that's a good question to be honest most places reach out at least a month in advance frontier is a little iffy because they don't always know frontier's been reaching out to me about three days in advance um and i've been telling him that I will do my best, but three days is not enough notice. Mm -hmm. We actually had great success last month, which is mind blowing. Um, but ideally, I would like to have a month's notice because we award shifts for per diems and stuff on a monthly basis. Um, so in an ideal world, I know about um, these details before the 15th of the month because that's when I award shifts. All right, do you, you probably want to add something into here about what yeah. that looks like. Mm. Do, you, do, is, do you do sports standby besides football? We've done, they, well, so yes and no. Um, like they, Frontier wanted some soccer games this year. I couldn't get anyone to do the hour and a half for the soccer game. Um, my proposal with this would be, after doing the math for how we don't lose money on this, it's a four hour minimum. Um, so even if, if somebody wants to hire us for two and a half hours, we kind of have to do four hours just to make up in the personnel and the fuel costs and depreciation and stuff like that, um, which would help us staff those events, but I know at least Frontier in particular, and they don't have to hire us. They don't like the amount that this is charged because it's way more than, historically Frontier, and I keep saying Frontier, this, the schools and the football games and the soccer games, they have a third party that hires out and it's usually $150 for like three games. Um, I don't like it because you're just getting handed cash and you're not like, it's not going through payroll. Like it's it's weird. I've never let the department, of, when I've been in charge of participate in that because it's, it's not like getting taxed normally. It's not going through like insurance. Like it's it's it feels funky. That's the way they like to do it because it's the cheapest way to do it. Um, but when they one of them reached out to me and said we'd like to pay one hundred fifty dollars for three hours, I was like I can't do that. Here's our rates. If you want us, this is what it is. Otherwise, go somewhere else. Um, so it's amazing the schools able to just parse out cash like that, not get yeah. receipts. And well, again, it's not that. It's I misspoke sure. there. That wasn't the schools. That's for like the, the rec leagues, um, the rec league football games and stuff. Uh, oh, that's okay. always, yeah, my that's apologies. Always. I misspoke okay. with that part. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. All right. Okay. But I have run into a few, a few of the details we tried to do earlier in the year were kind of the same thing where like they emailed me and they said, we will pay you $20 an hour to come. And I said, okay, well, that, we're not going. We're not coming. Because, not, because yeah. that's not what we charge. $20 yeah. an hour? Yes. And probably there would be no no issue with it, but I'm just thinking, okay, rec league, you, you, you took that money, you went there, some kid got hurt, and something happened on the ambulance, who are they going to call? Well, so the way that... It's a real you know, bad scene. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and just, I, I've mentioned this before, but just so everyone knows, the way that I parse out details, details never affect... and. Any other boss in this position would do the same thing. Details would never affect the coverage. Like I'm not going to send out yeah. our our primary truck to do a detail that's dedicated, and then there's nobody in town. Like that would never happen. Um, as nice as that extra money is, where the town's coverage is the primary concern, so we're never going to abandon the town's coverage. Um, Even years ago, when we, before we were full time, when you went over and did a football game from here, if you got called out. You knew, you already called somebody in Sutherland and said, hey, if we get a call, 
who's available that could jump in your truck and come over and sit at the football game? And right. Well, the, and the problem is now that EMTs are man, EMTs or athletic trainers are mandated at the football games. They're scrambling more. They're, yeah. They need to have somebody there. They can't yeah. have the game. Um, mm -hmm. So okay. you want a motion for this? Just why is the BLS more per hour than the ALS? Um, so I actually had a long conversation about all this stuff earlier in the week, and that's why I changed the single provider and the staff provider before ALS and BLS were broken down up top. And I admittedly overlooked the last minute non-scheduled where <coughs> it had made more sense to just break it down into single provider and a staffed ambulance. ALS or BLS would be treated on their need because it really, with factoring and depreciation stuff, it's not very much more expensive. Ideally, I would be changing the bottom part to remove ALS and BLS and just say staffed ambulance or single provider. The um, top is dedicated, the next one down is not dedicated. Yeah. Right, but then when you come down here, the plus per hour. Yeah. Right. I get, I get, oh, that was okay. I'm sorry. ALS is cheaper than a BLS. Yeah. Mm. Oh. Um, Yep. Yep. I, yeah, it was an omission on my part that I will fix. Um, okay. I just I Can overlooked we it. Approve then the top two elements and leave the last minute yeah, for I the can, next. So we'll so basically do you want to amend the last minute to just be just amend it right now just or amend it now. Yeah. Just say four hundred bucks. Huh? ALS four hundred bucks an hour. I mean, that sounds Two thousand plus four hundred. Well, I, I'm I'm not even doing the the standby fee anymore because it just I built all of that into the hourly rate. The hourly rates are higher than the last time you guys looked okay. at the the, the fee schedule. Um, so it's four hundred dollars an hour would compute because at the sixty dollars an hour for the detail rate, that's one hundred and twenty. So the four hundred would make up for the increased aggravation of last minute scheduling and that. So I will amend it to four hundred dollars an hour for emergency scheduling. Right, and now, now just to prove it. Okay. Now, right. were you saying 400 because it's four hour minimum, or were you saying 400 because that's a good number? Because 280, you're going from 280 for BLS? Yeah. So ALS, I figured at least 400. And mm -hmm. my, my rough math that I'm doing in my head right now, I'm not the fastest calculator, 400, like I said, the 60 and 60 an hour for each provider in a staff truck is 120, and then you factor in depreciation and stuff like that, which brings us up to a minimum of uh, 165 an hour, and then that gives us the extra $235 an hour as in extra incentive for the last minute. Um, and also on top of this, I feel the need to clarify, there is, so for the dedicated provider, if it's, you have a staffed ambulance at $165 an hour, there's also the 10% um, administration. administrative fee um, that I had talked to Brenda about, and she said that's the standard across all the departments is you have your hourly rate and then you have an administrative fee. Um, she said the police department, I think, for example, doesn't charge the administrative fee for town entities. Um, right. So on the scheduled dedicated provider that staffed the ambulance at 165 an hour, is that two EMTs and the ambulance? Yes. Or is that 165 hour per EMT? No, that's the staffed ambulance, that's 165 an hour, that's two EMTs. And that's the number that I came up to with factoring in for depreciation and fuel and all that stuff. Um, it's not a huge profit margin. And so a, a single provider without the ambulance is just $100? Correct. And again, that's the number that we came up with, factoring in depreciation and all those costs. What does the police department get for a cruiser? $10. Yeah, $10. it's $10. Yeah, but it's the cruiser can go 30 miles but an the, hour. The cruisers it's, are, it's, it's the broken ones, you know, the last But they only get $10 down. an hour for the cruiser? Covers mm -hmm. the insurance. <laughs> I was going to say, take that staff to move it to at least 200 an hour, but um, I guess my only other thing on this is what do we want to do about the school? Because you know that's going to come up. You know, you talked about a four hour, four hour. If it's staffed ahead of time, it's not an issue. It shouldn't be a four hour minimum. It'll just be whatever the game is. So a two hour. Or if the game's, you know, with the school, if they only go an hour and a half. Do we do the hour and a half? No, you'd have to do the two, well, two hour minimum. Okay. And because I should be there beforehand, and, and well, and, and, and wait. that's why it's built out that way is so that people can be there before and after, and it's just there's all these talks about like, or I've had talks about charging different rates for schools and stuff. It's just 
it depends on if we just want to charge them for the cost of people and remove the other potential expenses from it. Like instead, now that's coming out of our budget instead of the school like supplementing. Like if we go to a frontier and we do a refusal where we actually treated somebody and used supplies, now mm -hmm. we're taking that out of our basket instead of taking it out of the school's basket, which it could still happen depending on the day that we end up spending more on supplies or something at an event. It's unlikely. I think I've come pretty close with the supply costs that I would estimate from any sort of refusal. Uh, okay. But that's just the risk I worry about with charging less is that the numbers have a bit of thought into them as to why they are what they are. And I don't, I don't doubt that. I just, you know, they're going to come back. What the hell is this? We only paid, you know, whatever the hell they've paid in the past, and now. It's, it's just but it's the cost, cost of doing business. business. Yeah. Cost of doing business. Yeah. Nothing you can do. And I mean, it's like what they say to us when they come with their school budget, and they say, "This is how much it's going to cost to run the schools. Are you towns going to pay this?" Yeah. And, and then we, just, we say, well, what, this, what are we going to do? We're going to have to pay that. What they can charge us back for it. So right. Except the cost gets spread among the four towns. Exactly. I was just going to say, and also what happens if the um. You know, the kids pay a fee to participate. Sports. So, the, you know, mm -hmm. it will be bumped up by all the kids that are yeah. participating. Um, and they just let me know that the for, for an emergency detail for the police department, um, the, per, the police officers get paid $90 an hour. So it's a 50% increase in the fee. So the logical thing it sounds like to do would be to increase our fee for the emergency detail by an extra 50%, um, if that makes sense. I would be consistent. So that would be mm -hmm. 247, 250 an hour for the emergency detail for um, for uh, the staffed ambulance. So like one fifty and then so the, 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 yeah. Why why don't you just uh why don't you just have that ready for next time? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. That's fine. Yeah. A good solution. And, and I and I and I also think that you know. We can have some discussions with others also about see what see see what other towns charge or ambulance service charges also. Okay. Okay. Um, moving forward, then I think we're almost done. Um, the, the chief candidates interviews. I just didn't know if there's any discussion that we needed to have tonight before the meeting on the. Seven. Yeah, yeah there, there is a little bit. First is that um, we just just so the committee, we the subgroup had yeah. thought we were going to um, would love to have recommended four or five individuals. We did not have um, that number to forward. Um, we the group we had five. We thought candidates out of the uh, applicant pool that we felt we could interview. Um, we had we had five. The one of them refused an interview. Um, yeah. One of them planned poorly and didn't arrive on the interview date. And then we did three interviews. Right. Um, so we and there there was two candidates that were um, head and shoulders above the other, and that's why we 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 talked about. Recommending the three, but there to us there and it was unanimous that there was two candidates that were head and shoulders. That that's why we we recommended the two for interviews. The other thing is I would like um, the committee members, the board of oversight, to forward questions to um, Chris Nolan. I talked to him today. And yeah. If there there's questions that you want. So I'll send them all your email. Can yeah. can we um, see the questions that you all asked? Mm -hmm. yeah. Because I mean I don't have any we'll want to do technical repetition yeah. of. What's that? We wouldn't want to repeat the questions no, that are no, already. Right, but no. also I want to just get a flavor of the technical yeah. kind of stuff that you asked because mm -hmm. I don't have any background for that. that. Right. Um, <coughs> so pie pie spice on the so <laughs> my my <laughs> request or. Right the way we did it last time Ouch. is that we all come up with questions good. and yeah. myself and uh, Mr. Kennedy with experience in the field submitted some EMS questions and the others submitted some questions from their own experiences and stuff. Um, my recommendation to the board, and I don't know how everyone's going to feel about this, is that 
I would like to be part of it as a, I don't need a vote, but as the op someone who has an operational background and stuff, um, to be part of the interview panel, and then I can come up with some additional questions and an aspect, and then if you guys submit questions that you think are good for management, because you all know that better than I do. Um, but the way it worked last time is we, all the members of the committee sent them forward to Chris Nolan, and Chris reviewed all of them and made sure they were in compliance with the human resources requirements and the legal way we're allowed to ask questions. And then before our meeting, which was the caveat to be challenging here, before our meeting, we had a brief conversation about the questions and how we liked them. Um, and we did a few minor changes and then we interviewed on those questions. Um, right now, how it's scheduled, and me and Chris kind of winged it because obviously Casey was not around and we needed to get this set up, um, is the meeting starts well, it's not posted yet, but the way we had it thought out is the meeting starts right at the first interview. That was the impression as to how those things often happen is as soon as the meeting starts, that's when the first interview happens. Um, if we think that we need some time for conversation or something, then I think we should post the meeting a little bit earlier, but I don't know what I, the I flavor is. I would start a half hour early. A half hour early? Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah. Right, so we can talk about how we're going to... And, and, and the only reason is because the Deerfield board is going to be there. Um, and, and we have to work with them scheduling how, how the questions are going to be asked and um, and who, who leads the conversation, blah, 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 blah. Does, so. Do we start a half hour early in executive session? Because, no. no? Okay. So, it's a public meeting. Well, that, I just don't, I don't understand the logistics. It's not, it's not yeah. a public meeting. It's, it's weird for an interview if you weren't. Well, well I just meant the theoretically Lori could yeah. go and sit in that the conversation we're having beforehand, which I'm not there's, saying. There's, no, there's nothing that we're going to be talking about that would okay. be. Okay. It's it, it, procedures we, as much well, as We're not going to be talking about the candidates. We're going to be, we're going to be talking how the questions are going to be asked and, and who's going to lead the questions. And yeah. so there's nothing, you're, it's, it's running the meeting. Okay. Um, my next question, and I, I've been, again, I haven't been able to get a hold of Casey to a straight answer. Does the meeting get posted in the normal session then after the interviews go into executive session or no? For, no? The, the deliberations are in open session. Okay, so. I just, I didn't understand if that's how that yeah. worked or not. The only thing that can be in closed session is like the preliminary where your okay. candidates haven't said, yes, I'm going to take a public interview. And, okay. Uh, and yeah. there's no quorum. Like, yeah. There will be a quorum because yeah, this will be, board is going to yeah. be. I see. Okay. It's the hiring authority. Okay. So it's public. These meeting Everything. laws are a little confusing. It's okay. Um, so I'm going to talk to Casey and get that. If we're going to do a half hour early, get it posted for 5.30 on December 7th. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and, and I would suggest CC and Chris Nolan on this because, you know, there's no guarantee that Casey's had some recent health issues and so, you know, if the meeting's going to take place, both of them need to know so that one one of them can fill in if the other one is not available. Right. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll email Chris tonight, and I'll email all of you Chris's email so you can send any prospective questions that you have. Um, <coughs> and I'll reach out to, I don't know, if, is the town of Deerfield open tomorrow for normal business? Um, for half day. Half, half day. day? Okay. Half so day. I'll try to reach out to Chris and Casey tomorrow as well. So, so we had, we, we allowed 45 minutes for the question we had 14 questions we asked for an answer we, we wanted to see if the candidates could also manage time so we talked about you know they were kind of responsible for their you know limiting their answers to maximum three minutes mm -hmm. and, and it was it was interesting you know I, I thought it's interesting trying to that so that person needs to manage be able to manage time as well yeah, I just wanted to see what questions you asked. No, no, at, no I would think that I would think so that you'd want to, and I, and I would hope, and I would hope, I I would hope the th the the three boards may want to ask a question, and and in my opinion, if the board as a group wants to submit a question, they would take press, they would take a precedence also. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, um, I mean, do we ask? Just, oh, was, sorry, Carol. No, I was just concerned not having any technical background. I mean, I, I felt certainly comfortable enough, you know, after years and years and years of EMS from a, some stuff, but not not operationally, obviously. I, and uh, like, I'll, I'll be happy I'll, to, I'll look through the operational questions I submitted before and find different types of operational questions to submit for this time around. And then you'll be there to 
to answer any operational questions that candidates may have. And this is the Boo and the Deerfield Select Board only, or is the other select My boards understanding too? is it's the Deerfield and the Boo only. Yeah, because that's what I thought. The, the Boo that's is the representatives from the other town, and yeah. the Deerfield Select Board is there as the hiring agent. Right. The, the Boo is, is a quorum, right? Mm -hmm. and the Select Board is a quorum. Mm -hmm. And then, hopefully, yeah. you make a decision. But if uh, the other Sunderland members or Waitley members would like it's to attend. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay. And I believe last time we did this, we had both candidates up but to ask the question to one and then to the other. Is that the that, format or that's are we gonna not what Casey when I talked to Casey about how this is we how it should be done, she said we should have one scheduled for six, one scheduled for seven, and that wasn't the way that should be done. Yeah. Um, but I, that, I, I'm open to anything. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. I think you have to, well, I don't want to say because, but from a legal point of view now, or a lawsuit point of view, not having two together. Okay. Or not having one observe the other, okay. or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's an open meeting. Yeah. It's an open meeting. It's in an case. open meeting. I know. So you invite one at six, and, and you invite, invite one, one at seven. seven. And if the seven o'clock candidate comes at 630, then you ask him to stay in the foyer because they're not a town resident it is an open meeting but anybody can attend you they, they have yeah. no right to speak but they can listen yeah because well they, that sort of defeats the purpose of asking the first candidate a question and having the second candidate sit there listen and then that's, say okay that's this a, is that's how I'm going to plus they have that yeah. much more time to prepare it doesn't matter that's that's that's, that's the way that's I, the way I, I I'm I mean that's why I asked if they should sit side by side and you ask one and no. Well, we did that years that ago, and, and apparently, because you're asking one person one question, then you're asking another person another one, that that is not what you're supposed no, to do. No, you cannot no. ask them different you ask, questions. You ask the first candidate the question, then you the same question goes to the second candidate, I know. and then the next round, the second uh, question. I'm just, I'm just going to say one thing, okay? I, I, I learn a lot by that person that has a second of... Uh, interview is comes in at six o'clock i learn a lot i am not going to say anything more but i would hope you would learn a lot by somebody that does that mm -hmm. okay. my, only, my only other point was going to be on the technical piece of it i would hope by now both candidates are going to be technically sound because we've done our Right. Oh, I, yes. I, have, I think it's more a matter of, of mm -hmm. yeah. I have no reservations from the operational standpoint from either candidate. Um, I think there's always good questions that can questions operationally that can lead into management and overseeing right. questions. Sure. Um, but absolutely, both, absolutely. Both both candidates answered all the operational questions without any worry from me. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. And, and I didn't and mean to downplay your concern. I just wanted to make sure I, that I wanted to know about mm -hmm. more like level kind of stuff. And yeah. there was conversations about things that Tim are doing now with budgeting that candidates knew in advance about also. So they, they, they were asking if we were doing it. So yeah, but both of the candidates su su surprised me with the the knowledge of things that I wouldn't have necessarily expected them to ask about. So good. We're happy about budgeting issues. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad somebody yeah. is. <laughs> you won't be happy come March or April, but <laughs> no, that's not true. Actually, I, I am so excited, Tim. Everybody's done such a good job. I, I think we're in really good shape. I mean, no, I, I, I agree, and I, I'll echo what I said earlier. I don't mean to repeat myself, but I appreciate all the effort that's gone into it. I, 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 I was at, right, this I last agree. year was very stressful. Mm -hmm. I agree. And, and so I, I'm this, absolutely I'm not, sure that I'm not looking, I'm if you ask him not to come until bad. 7 and no say, yeah, but then that, you'd hope you wouldn't yeah. have to do it. Yeah. I mean, but it should be made clear that you don't want you here at 6 2, 6 10. Mm -hmm. You want you here at 7 o'clock. Yeah. Because that tells me, too, do they arrive on time? My assumption is going to be that the candidates will be the fashionable arrival that both of them had at the previous meeting. But I wouldn't consider either one to have been. Obsessively early. <laughs> so we're going to schedule forty minutes, so forty-five minutes. So we should yeah. have fifteen minutes between right. the first candidate and the second. Right. Are you to leave any time at all for any residents to ask questions if they should show up? And do we need? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was, do we need to make a public like? Can the residents just ask them on the floor? Is there the risk of them asking an unallowed, not allowed question, or do you just does a moderator shoot down that question? We're, at that we're not responsible for. I mean, if I'm, 
if a member of the public asks an inappropriate question, it's not our. We can say it's inappropriate. Why, why, why would why would anybody why would the why would the audience be recognized? Well, if if somebody they have a, they have a right to be there, they don't have a right yeah, to we, speak. We could suspend well, public comment for could, the meeting. We could okay. we could decide not to do that. I, I only asked. We had before our interview process. We had residents ask. In an interview? Yes. Yes. We when did. we when we hired the first director, we gave yeah, residents it's like a half we, hour. We know we know a lot more fifteen years later than we did back then. Right. I know, but I'm and just Tom, saying. And Tom, I don't doubt it. I'm just asking to yeah. understand the and, process. And, and, I, and I would I and would say I would that say process, that I would I'm say that this group that, that this group this. is responsible to the, the residents of our community. Mm -hmm. And if someone asks an inappropriate question, this group is responsible. So I, why would I even entertain allowing someone to ask an inappropriate question? My concern was if we we're going to ask loud question, then you don't really know if they're, they're the, going to the, ask. If somebody, if somebody, if somebody in the audience wants to talk to the candidates after the meeting, after the interview outside, go at it. No, but that's what we did last time. Right. That's why. I know. And that's why Matt. What and you I did were ten saying. years ago is not germane to what we're going to do tomorrow. You know, on the seventh. And that's. I'm fine with that. Yeah. I just I wanted to know. I'm fine with that too, but. Because I wanted to make sure right. we're all set up and absolutely we agree. appropriately right. schedule the time. We should know how this process is yeah. supposed to run. Yeah, right. and yeah. then you run so, the risk too of different questions being asked sure. to each candidate yeah. by allowing the public to ask questions. And now you're, I believe, grading somebody on a different I, set of questions. I want to say we asked people to write their questions, and maybe Jonathan went around with the microphone and took the card and asked on behalf well, just as a quick mm -hmm. quick make sure it wasn't something wildly inappropriate but if if that's I, I just want to understand yeah no I'm I, sorry. I agree I'm not yeah. trying so, to pick a fighter on no me, exactly so. again I, I agree when it's you just, post the meeting you can post the, the questions yeah be submitted prior sure. to any question should be submitted to and, and, and it will be used at the discretion of the moderator and that there will be no public comment I mean, okay. we just say that yeah. public yeah. comment will be suspended. Okay. And and that any questions that people the public may be concerned about would then be submitted by X date. Okay. You uh, know, by December first mm -hmm. or something like that. And I would also Whatever. like to ask that. And, and there's no guarantee that we'd use them, but ask if it's okay if I ask the department if they have any questions for consideration to send them to me to send to Chris Nolan. But that's mm -hmm. up to you, you guys. Yeah. Um, no, that's fine. Too. As I said, there's no guarantee they'll be used, but there's right. just as mm -hmm. an option. Great. Um, if there's nothing else on that. Well, no, that's a good idea because then it will be screened. Everything will be screened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, I think times have changed, not just yeah. allowing the public to participate, but also, you know, what is acceptable and what's not. And as Tom said, theoretically, yeah. the board is the representative of the public, so hopefully um, questions are being asked. And you're, asked, you're allowing people to submit questions, so that to me is pretty good. Um, Okay. So that's that. We did the Comstar write off. Does anyone have any business that isn't reasonably anticipated? Just have a nice Thanksgiving, everybody. That can be reasonably anticipated. <laughs> budget, <laughs> budget process for Deerfield has that started? I've been talking to Brenda. She said that it's officially going to start in the first week of December. She sent me the stuff a little early so I could get my feet in the water. Okay. Um, so. Uh, we don't hot actually, water, Timmy. Yeah. Hot water. We, we don't actually um, look start reviewing until you know sometime. She told me the first week of January was going to be her ideal for the preliminary budget. Um, I'm. She told me to ask her questions if I needed to, and I said I would be asking her plenty of them. Um, but I, I, I feel comfortable. I feel like I have a good grasp. I think we should have another board of oversight meeting planned prior to it being submitted, so I can show you all what I have. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. I, I just want to make sure it's. You're getting the information that you need so you can properly plan, not that we hire somebody. Oh, yeah. No. They start in three weeks, and oh, by the way, the budget's due next week, and they're like, yeah, right. You know. I'm not, I, well, 
and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't actually anticipate, like, even if people are satisfied on December 7th, there's still the, the negotiation oh, yeah. problem. Like, I don't anticipate right. anything happening immediately anyway. Right, yeah. So I feel like the preliminary budget will have to be submitted beforehand anyway, which is unfortunate that you're the new guy and you have to work with someone else's budget, but I had to work with someone else. Like, it's just, yeah, no, it's, it's the way the game's fine. Playing. Yeah, but you have the base budget from last year. Right. right. And so what you're trying to do is just anticipate what, what are the changes. Correct. Yeah. And yeah. obviously we have personnel um, increases. But you know what? What is our actual like utility costs? Right, and we've we've already had quite a bit of conversation, and we already have conversation going forward as to where we expect changes and where we expect things to stay the same. So I'm not mm -hmm. I'm not super worried. I'm sure it's going to be. I expect it to be a lot. I'm sure it's going to be more than I expect, but I'm not worried about it. Mm -hmm. And and also it's preliminary because we don't actually have a, a review review until mm -hmm. we get a total. Yeah. So when you submit it in January, for January, or the end of December, then it can be tweaked at, right. you know, any time until really town meeting. And I just want to understand, there's no, there's no meetings I'm supposed to be attending in the next month. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that there was nothing I was going to, that was going to fall the, off my radar the, or anything well, like that. Well, um, what happens is the Capital Improvement Committee meets, which I'm on that committee, and we meet to review total, what the total requests are. Mm -hmm. That's why we do it December 1st, so we can let everybody know what our total, what we anticipate we should be doing as a minimum. Okay. But this wouldn't impact us here at all because this is not, this is money that's retained out of retained earnings versus, you know, raise and appropriate. Okay, so that's not a cash. meeting that I need to attend. No. Okay, I just didn't want to miss anything I was supposed so to be So the only thing I would say, yep. that now we're starting, Tim, is that it'd be nice if you take our budget and, and work with, uh, with the town and start showing us what, what our expenditure expenditures are versus our total mm -hmm. appropriated amount. So let us know, like, you know, so we can we, we can look at the budget and see, okay, we're on track with our, our personnel, we're on track with our fuel, we're on, you know what I mean? Yep, and so, I've been looking at those monthly and perhaps I shouldn't be including them in these reports. Um, yeah, and, and, and we probably, and you, and you could send those out and it'd be kind of nice I don't know if you guys are looking at Deerfield on we a regular. Are. We get them monthly. But but it'd be nice to send those out to to us also, so that we can look at those and and we can. Uh, the repair things are the only yeah. things that are anomaly. Everything else is on track. Okay. 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 And it, actually doing really good. I mean we're. Yeah. yeah. Like it, but that, said, that, that but that's yeah, good we, for we us. Just don't let getting big surprises no. come yeah. in February. I will, I will send out. Um, I'll see if Brenda. I think the last one I got was last month. So I'll send out the most up to date one I can get. Mm -hmm. um, if not tomorrow, then early next week when everyone's back in the town office. She she will have the November report in the first week of December. Okay. Um, so and that will give you, you know, you, where you are in the budget timeline yep. and how much you've spent in the timeline. And you'll see it's not, yeah. I mean, you're doing everything. Yeah, I'm, I've, fine. I've been looking at it, I'm not super concerned. Um, everything's yeah. fine. So I guess my next question would be when is, when are we holding our December meeting? Ideally, probably towards the end or later on, but I know holiday s season is terrible. So, um, well, is there a need for a December meeting? Well, do we want to look at the budget before I submit the preliminary or? So, uh, do do you all anticipate making a decision on December seventh on the person that we're going to hire? That that that's what I would say. That would be the only reason that we would have another meeting is if we don't have a, de a decision made, and or and or if we wanted to we schedule, schedule one. I would think we should schedule one. We you could, could do it the following cancel week. Cancel it. Yeah, we could just cancel it. Right. Um, and that way, it's still early December. Um, so the week of the eleventh. Yeah. Um, we could do the 14th, maybe. You okay with that? Hope, please. Are you that's gonna be a ready? Week, that's a yeah. week beyond. No, that's not a good day. You could Carol. use that okay. new. Uh, yeah. 16th? Thanks. Six, uh, 16th is Saturday. I'm in the wrong month. Disregard. <laughs> um, I can't do the 14th. Yeah, the 14th is no good. 13th, we get a select board meeting. What about the 12th? 15th? 15th or the 12th, if we have, let's yeah, do this on a do Friday. 12th. <laughs> 12th, is, 12th works for everyone. 12th? Crystal, yep. is that a Crystal, you? Yep. Crystal? Okay. Hold, please. 12th, 6 Stop p.m. Stop rushing That's okay. 12th, 6 p.m. Okay. All right. 6 right. p.m. Um, because then if there's any issues with the budget or questions on the budget or questions on who, you know, about the uh, interviews on the 7th, 
When does their preliminary budget get submitted? So Brenda said first week of January. First week of January. Sure, you're good. Yeah. Okay. What? I, I, I've got, to finish some of the meeting, I've got a question on the, the higher end. What, who gets to vote? Is this a Town of Deerfield select board vote? Or is this yes. a boo vote? Yes. We recommend to the Town of Deerfield so, select board. The boo so, recommends. So, to the in board. essence, it is two. It is It'll be two votes. It'll two be votes. South okay. County. I, I, if just since both. South County will recommend to the select board. The select board will. Yes. Uh, the reason why it's together is because mm -hmm. uh, we have represent Deerfield representation, mm -hmm. um, and the select board is the hiring authority, and so we need to be on the same page. Okay, I just wanted and to clarify right. what <laughs> what the procedure was. Um, yeah. And that way, all on the authority, all decisions can be made that night, if, okay. if possible, or if there's. A decision. In, in, in that, in that's just like. Typically, an offer is made contingent upon negotiations. Negotiations would have, so we make a recommendation. The, the Deerfield Board would have to make an offer contingent upon successful completion of negotiations. Right. We offer we offer the job right. as the hiring authority, but it's based on your recommendation first. Correct. And then they they, they they're going to probably want to do, you know, because of the position. I'm not sure about them, but they're probably going to check references. They want to probably check the, uh, you know, like at some places may want to look at financial standing, right. whatever. I don't know. I don't know so specific what Deerfield's asked to do these social days. People <coughs> check social media now. But yeah. they're probably. I, I just probably, want to clarify where the lines. I would of say they definitely want to probably want to look at references before they, okay. you know, and and. And I would think that they'd want to make sure that he ha the person has a valid driver's license and a uh, pair we believe. I, I've, I ran all the paramedic cards. Everyone who was interviewed yeah. had a valid medic we card. We believe. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. that would, but. There's that, a more yeah. thorough background investigation with OEMS, my understanding is, once we have a final, like once some, we can get someone to consent to that, we can dig deeper to see if there's ever been any disciplinary stuff and stuff like that. Well, then they have to do the quarry check. I mean, there, yeah. there's a bunch that the. Yeah. That and that's hiring, all part of yeah. the hiring. The hiring. The hiring Vetting group has a whole bunch of stuff that, that has to be done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We we've never had a situation where, we, where the boo was recommended. Somebody in the board of selectmen said no. Yeah. But that's why we're do this. I just haven't been through the process. No, and I appreciate the question. It's valid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But this <laughs> you've heard my <laughs> questions all night. It's right. changed, so it's. Yeah. But that's why everybody right. does this together so that everybody's concerns are out together right. and, and you know what is happening yeah. at the same time. And there's no she said, she said, he said, whatever. It's just everybody's experiencing the same experience together. It works best that way. Yeah. Okay. Um, my ask, and I think it would benefit if we could get the question, any questions you have, probably sooner rather than later. I don't have an exact cutoff but for what they would probably want, but just so Chris and Casey have time to review them and make sure everything's kosher before the mm -hmm. December 7th interview. Um, Do me a favor, speak with Chris. Yep. Drop us all an email. Okay. Yep. Instructing us, please submit all questions to Chris. Have Chris's email on there and give us a, a date okay. when you want to buy. I'll, I'll call him first thing tomorrow and I'll send you guys out an email as long as I get in touch with him. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, you December said, 1st is Friday, so that is illogical. Okay. You guys said you had 14 questions or 15? 14. 14. 14. I mean, if the questions changed for the candidates because we get input from the public and from us, select board members or something um, from the various towns or whatever, um, we still should only have about 14 questions. 14. Because... It's uh, you know, three, two, three, minute three minutes, little, three minutes spare, fifteen minute gap, um, just so. Yeah, I agree. The the public questions could have to be much better than the technical question from the EMS staff in order to even make the cut. Well, I don't think you can do all technical questions. No, 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 no. I mean, I just meant yeah. management questions. There's all kinds of right. Yeah. 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 But hopefully, the the boo had a good set of questions to begin with. I, I trust in the process and trust in the folks that were there. And yeah. 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 Everybody can't be a part of it, so you've got to. Right. 
So that was kind of my point. Yeah. It's like I'm sorry. I didn't yeah. Mean to no, but no, but I mean, yeah. Down, but the under, the underlying is. There's only so many questions you can ask. Yeah. So. Okay. Anything else? <clears throat> Any other questions? So we're gonna we'll get an email tomorrow from uh, Assistant Town Administrator Deerfield asking you for questions. Uh, send three, five, ten, whatever. How many questions that you have? Um, then the with with the questions that were asked previously. Right. Yeah. We yeah, yeah. want to know what what and been that'll asked. Casey has that. So I, if I can get in touch with Casey, that'll be if I can get them out tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> that should be relatively yeah mm -hmm. straightforward. If you can't get that, get the other piece out to us, and we can at least send them back. And then if we've got duplicates, you can just chop them off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's fine. But if I, if I can't get the Casey ones tomorrow, then I'll get them next week. Okay. It's, it'll just, I'll get them as soon as I can get them. Perfect. All right. Okay. Okay. Entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? Here, no discussion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Mr. Tim declares out at 740 with the unanimous vote.